morning. My name is Roger Shock. I'm the pastor of this amazing congregation here at First United Methodist Church in Corinth, Mississippi. I want to welcome you to worship this morning. And thank you for watching our channel 16 and or the internet. We hope and pray that your worship with us will be meaningful and that you will find and experience the presence of God even in these moments of worship together. May God bless us all as we worship Him today. Good morning. My name is Roger Shock of Pastor's Amazing Congregation. Let me welcome each of you to worship this morning. It's always good to gather in this place to worship the living God. So thank you for being here this morning and uh, uh, expect to experience the presence of the living God as we worship this day. So thank you for being here, especially those of you who are visiting with us. Let me uh, just share the announcements with you real quick. Uh, one is we are uh, still looking for some nursery volunteers. We have some, so we're not begging, but we want to give you an opportunity uh, to be a part of that, uh, uh, maybe the funnest ministry on the planet, if you like to hold babies, because uh, we got babies, and so we want you to hold and to love and to care for babies. So if you're interested in that, uh, please uh, follow through by calling Haley or emailing Haley and let her know that you're interested in being a part of that ministry. And uh, uh, it's not every week, it's once every uh, two months, once every six weeks, or, or even longer, depending on how many sign up. So just want to make sure that you have that opportunity and that, uh, 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 to, to serve in that way. Uh, Ministry of Council minute uh, records, uh, or minutes for Ministry of Council are on the back, in the, uh, uh, on the cabinet, on the glass cabinet on this side, outside in the North Deck. So if you want to see the uh, minutes from our last Ministry of Council meeting, they're out there for you. We're getting close in a couple of, uh, another four weeks or so for a tenor retreat, And so I invite you to uh, do as we've done in the past to bring candy so we can give that out to children uh, here on Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. Uh, last year we had some 600 children that came through. And uh, so we want to give you an opportunity to be a part of that ministry just, just like always. Uh, so if you'll start bringing your candy and leaving it here on Sunday mornings, uh, We'll make sure that gets in the pile, and there'll be uh, just a, a grand time here uh, doing tenor treat on the uh, uh, October 28th. The bees meet Wednesday. Uh, they're going to the lake and uh, to the Fisher's Place, and so if you're part of that ministry, uh, I think they're leaving around 10. Don't be late. Is that right? Somebody give me a heads and yes, yes. Be here by 10, we'll leave shortly thereafter. So uh, uh, that'll be a fun afternoon uh, at the lake as always. So um, uh, keep that in mind. What other announcements do we need to share at this time that I'm unaware of? Who know their announcements? So spend a few moments in silent prayer, lifting up Cynthia and Bill Frutiger with uh, the death of their daughter, uh, Lainey Gonzalez. She passed away this past Thursday. Uh, out in Texas, and that's where uh, Cynthia and Bill are at now uh, for services sometime this week. So let's lift, up, let's lift this good family up in our prayer, silent prayers. Would you pray with me? Hear our prayers, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. My good friends, we are here to worship the living God. Let's prepare ourselves to do so.
It is good to give thanks to the Holy One, <clears throat> to declare your steadfast love in the morning, for you, O oh God, have made us glad by your work. Remain standing for opening hymn, hymn number 421, Make Me a Captive, Lord. a captive Lord and then I shall be free force me to render up my sword and I shall conquer me I sink in life's alarm when by myself I stand in prison me with Please remain standing and say we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. For thence he should come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
please be seated. I invite Bill Odom to come forward and share a moment, a uh, stewardship moment with us, uh, answering the question, if you will, what do you love most about this church and this congregation? Bill, come and share with us. Thank you. Good morning. morning. Grace and peace to you. Grace and peace to you. I was asked to respond to what do you love most about this church? I thought that's easy. And it is. I love Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, who is a part of me and this church. So my big love is Jesus Christ. This is something that we deal with on a daily basis, whether it is in word or uh, more often in action as far as what we do around here. As Amanda said last week, she and Quentin came here, jumped right in, didn't go anywhere else, and found a church home. We did the same thing. Judy and I came here with our three daughters, Patrice, Angela, and Tracy, and we got right in and never went anywhere else. The difference was that was 1974. (laughs) So we've been around for quite a long while. Here we are, we are the church with a heart in the heart of the city. And we are beginning, or we're not beginning, we're in our second 50 years in this particular facility. We most definitely continue to have uh, the uh, heart uh, that is a part of, we have the heart and we're in the heart of the city, and we provide a lot of uh, accommodation for our community. And it's part of our ministry. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. Reach out and touch all those that you can in my name. And that's what we need to be doing. You know, all things considered, We look here and we see this magnificent structure, but this is not the church. You're the church. The people are the church. If we meet in this magnificent hall or if we meet in a Sunday school room or if we meet at home, if we meet in any place, the people are the church. You remember the the old saying uh, for children, uh, here's the church, here's the steeple, open the door, see all the people? Well, that's what the church is. It's not about the structure. It's about the congregation and about the people. Uh, Change is a part of what we have to deal with. Change is um, uh, something we can't stop. Uh, And change normally requires some adjustment. I'm not good at adjusting. I like for things to stay the same. But it's not going to happen. For example, our Sunday school class. Uh, In 1974, when we came to this church, Buddy Walters was teaching the the Friendship Sunday school class. And... uh, Uh, Pretty soon he found out that I had uh, taught um, Sunday school uh, in Macomb, and I had taught Sunday school in Oxford, and pretty soon I was teaching Sunday school here. Somewhere around 1976, I began to do it on a regular basis, and I continue to do it on a regular basis today. We uh, We began in the parlor. And many of you will remember we had patio furniture in there uh, that uh, today would be classified as kind of gaudy. If Gerald's back there, he's still got some of it. (laughs) Then, uh, because the parlor was redone and so forth, our Sunday school class moved upstairs in the, the room where the challengers are now. 
<laughs> and we went along for a while, and Al began to have overflow crowds, so we talked and decided that we'd swap rooms. And so uh, our class moved across the hall, and Al moved into the bigger room. A few years ago, we had a situation where the Lester Henry class uh, downstairs was um, uh, reducing in numbers, and it was suggested that perhaps our Sunday school class should combine with them. And we did. So we moved downstairs. And we were in the corner room downstairs for a, quite a long while. Well, we had a need for that room dealing with the little blessings operation and the children's operation. So we were asked if we would move back to the parlor. Well, now we're back in the parlor. So we have moved full circle as far as location is concerned, but we continue to deal with loving and caring and sharing with each other as far as our love of Christ and love of one another is concerned. <clears throat> as we deal with the church, your church and mine, when you join the church, you make some commitments. You uh, pledge to support your church with your time and your talent and your uh, presence and your money. The church can't operate without your support. You need to be an integral part of it. Somewhere around this time of year, uh, as we get into stewardship uh, campaigns and so forth, a minister rose to the podium and said to his congregation, I'm here to report to you that we are in grand shape. We have the funds to carry out our ministries. We have the funds to pay our staff. We have the funds to deal with maintaining our structures and so forth. We are in great shape. There is a problem. Those funds are still in your pocket. <laughs> you have to share it with the congregation in the church. You have to support the church in all ways. There are also some um, uh, potential tangible benefits. We had two men in an airplane flying over the Pacific Ocean. They crashed on an island. One of the men said, I'm going to go scout out the island, and he does. And he comes back and he says, we're going to die. There's no water. There's no food. We don't have anything. The other guy says, no problem, I make $250,000 a month. The first man says, you don't understand, we're going to die. The second man says, no problem, I make $250,000 a month, and I pledge my preacher will find us. <laughs> <laughs> You're dealing with, there are maybe some tangible benefits there, but the real truth is it's a love of God that you are dealing with as far as the church is concerned. This is a magnificent sanctuary. Anytime I come in here, I can't help but think, surely God is in this place. And my friends, that is good news. Thank you. I saw Miss Butler getting up. I thought Bowling was there, so that's why I kept looking back. Are y'all okay today? Yes. Yeah, are you sure? Yeah. I caught up this morning, and I got dressed, and John Thomas looked at me and said, why are you wearing that? And I said, well, what do you think it means? It's what team I'm for. And he said, Mississippi. And I said, no. 
What does it say on there? It does not. <laughs> it says First Methodist. Is that the church we're in? Yeah. I said, this is the team I'm for. And I talked to him and said, in our Bible story today, Jesus is talking to his disciples. His disciples came to him and they said, Jesus, we have seen some people and they are casting out demons. They are healing people in your name, but they don't know you and they're not part of us. So we told them to stop it. Do you think Jesus was happy with that? He said, don't stop them. For if they're working for me, nothing bad's going to happen. Even if they're not part of this group. And I thought, how can I talk to the boys and girls about this? How can I tell you about this? So here's what I came up with. When I was a little girl, I came to this church. Did you know that? I did. I came to this church. And I was in about the sixth grade. And I was going to Sunday school. And my teacher, Miss Elizabeth Coleman back there, um, was our teacher, and she said, it's time for you to decide what team you're going to play on. Are you going to love Jesus at this church? Or are you going to work for Jesus at another church? And she said, this church you think? I think so too, Jackson. Amen and amen again. Well, we went around, we went to First Baptist, and we was, visited their church service, and they have a beautiful sanctuary and beautiful people, and they sing beautiful songs. But it wasn't the right fit for me. And we went to a Catholic church. And they had a beautiful service. And we had to sit in the balcony in the back. And they took communion. But Miss Katie couldn't be a part of it because I wasn't a part of their church. And I thought, I'm not sure this is the right place for me either. So we also went to a Church of Christ, which is just up the road. And they didn't have instrumental music, but they had music. And my very best friend at the time went to that church. And she said, if you're not part of this team, you're not going to heaven. And I said, I don't think that's right either. So I came back to this church and I studied my word and I listened to my minister and I listened to Jesus and God. And I decided this was my home. This is where Miss Katie wanted to serve God and wanted God to work through me. And so sitting right here at this altar, kneeling right in that very spot right there, I asked God to come into my heart. And I was baptized and I was welcomed into this church as a member and a child of God. And I have since come and I grew up and I went to Mississippi State and I traveled around and looked at the different churches and guess what? I didn't land at a Methodist church. Guess where I went to church and found family with God? At Startville Church of Christ. And I met Mr. Mike there. <laughs> and then he fell in love with me, and I fell in love with him. And we came back here, and we got married in that little chapel right over there. And we started coming to church here. And I led vacation Bible school, and I taught Sunday school. And I thought, God, surely this is where you want me to be. Surely I am helping do your work. And my best friend from sixth grade who said, if you join another church, you're not going to heaven, guess what she's doing? She's serving God too in her own church, in her own way. Just because someone does not come to our church or believe like we believe does not mean they're not working for God's kingdom. They are too. And when it comes time for you to pick your church, your team, how you will serve God, I hope you listen to him. Jesus also said he wants us to be the salt. Do you know what salt does? Have you ever eaten a potato chip without salt on it? Does it taste good? No. Well, you like salt? Bring it, right? I know. It makes everything taste a little bit better. So Jesus said he wants us to be the salt. So whatever team you choose, if it's First Methodist, if it's First Presbyterian, if it's First Baptist, if it's Church of Christ, if it's Catholic, if it's Episcopal, wherever you choose to serve Christ, let Christ serve through you. Follow Jesus, okay? And if it's here, woohoo! Okay? Let's be the salt in the world today. Let's go flavor the world with our love for Christ, okay? Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much that you come into our sweet lives, that you offer love to us unconditionally. 
May we serve you and be the salt in the world to help flavor all people in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would take your hymnals and turn to hymn 369, we'll stand and sing together, Blessed Assurance. things bright and beautiful, all creatures, great and small, sing your praises, O God. Your countless gifts to us call forth our praise and response and gratitude. Thank you, loving God. Amen. Please be seated.
Please be seated. from Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 38 through 50. Follow along or listen to the word of our God. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop them because he was not following us. 
But Jesus said, do not stop him, for no one who does the deed of power in my name will be able to soon afterwards to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you, if any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be, will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. <clears throat> interesting text this week, and it's actually the very next verses uh, that I left off last week. And interesting that you would sing that song that, uh, hush, somebody's calling my name, uh, somewhere in this scripture today about stumbling blocks and, and eyes and hands and feet and salt, uh, somebody's calling our name, and our response is, what is it that we shall do? So today's an interesting uh, sermon to talk about, but uh, I did in the, the scripture last week, and the last verse that we talked about uh, that was in the reading last week was, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Jesus' words to his disciples were very simple and very direct, but you know the disciples missed the entire point. No sooner did uh, Jesus uh, talk about welcoming others, uh, did the disciples come to Jesus complaining uh, that there was this one guy that was not part of their club, that was not part of their uh, uh, immediate group that was casting out demons in Jesus' name. The disciples were all concerned and all worried about uh, uh, this guy who was not following them, that was... Uh, uh, that was not doing the things with them, and that was not doing things like them. And it appears from Scripture that Jesus was less concerned about who was following his disciples, and he was more concerned about who was following him. Jesus goes on to, uh, to have this conversation about stumbling blocks uh, with his disciples, basically warning his disciples that, uh, that they're the ones in danger of, of doing the most harm in that moment. The problem more often than not is it's not the outside folks that are being uh, the greatest stumbling blocks in society. Those that are the stumbling blocks more often than not are those folks like us. The Christian folks, folks within the church, those who, who claim to be followers of Jesus we sometimes seem to be a greater stumbling block to the kingdom of God than those outside the walls of this church. I wonder this morning, are you a stumbling block for others? How are you getting in the way of the gospel of Jesus Christ in the world? Today's text from Mark warns the church and people like us from... from uh, uh, from finger pointing about what others are doing uh, that supposedly distract others away from God's ways and that cause others to, to stumble uh, on their faith of, uh, on their journey of faith. And for us to realize that, that oftentimes uh, we are the greatest stumbling block in society because we're so preoccupied. The church is so preoccupied today with, with, uh, with infighting and with self-righteousness. How the church acts 
and what the church focuses on uh, oftentimes is the greatest stumbling block of all. How the church acts and what it focuses on is oftentimes the greatest stumbling block of all. So in regards to today's text, how does, how does your hand cause you to sin and to be a stumbling block to others? How do your eyes uh, and the things that you look at uh, that you shouldn't look at lead others to stumble by your example? You know, I'm surprised in the scripture that, uh, that Jesus didn't mention the tongue uh, as a stumbling block. Think about it. Uh, haven't we all said something along the way that, was, uh, that caused somebody to stumble? Haven't we spoken an unkind word to someone else? Haven't some of you used the four-letter words to somebody else? I say some of you because most of us have. Haven't we, haven't we shared a, a word of judgment toward another that has caused someone to stumble? I'm surprised Jesus didn't say the tongue is a great stumbling block. I'm also surprised that, that Jesus didn't mention the brain uh, and, and what a, a cause of stumbling block it would be or has been or, or is. Haven't we all had a sinful thought that prevents us from doing what's right and what's best? Hadn't our mind worked on us to, to, to cause us to act the way we act because of something we thought? Haven't we all had that lustful longing or that thought of, of wanting to harm someone or wanting to hurt somebody? Or even if it's a really good committee meeting, we want to kill somebody. <laughs> Hadn't our brain caused us to think in ways which has guided our steps that has become a stumbling block for someone else? You know, to cause someone to stumble can mean several things. Uh, first off, it can mean that, uh, that your actions might cause someone to not believe in the truth. Or our actions might cause somebody to believe in something that's not true. So that's one cause of, uh, 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 that's, uh, of a stumbling block. Uh, secondly, um, to be a stumbling block, it might mean that, that our actions cause someone else to sin. Or thirdly, uh, our actions might cause someone to, to experience anger or shock or, or frustration or even fear because of something that we've said or something that we've done. The Christian Century Magazine wrote an article uh, some time ago about, about stumbling blocks. And here's what it said in, in this article. It said that stumbling blocks have many looks when it comes to faith. Excuses, blame, doubt, Rejection, disbelief. It thrives on rules and stipulations, judgment and expectation. Whose faith is greater? Who seems to believe more? Who follows the rules better than I do? And Jesus calls the bluff of today's Christian saying, we would rather find ways to block our own faith and the faith of others than to find ways to move forward. We seem far more inclined to, uh, toward obstruction than lifting up others. Let's face it, stumbling blocks are easy. It's easier. You just throw them out. You don't have to think about them. And they have only one purpose. Stumbling blocks only have one purpose. To put people in their places or to hold people back or to hold people down. How are we being stumbling blocks in the church today? The good news from the text today is that, uh, that this is a parable about prevention and not about punishment. Jesus is directly saying to his disciples and to us to, to stop doing whatever it is that you're doing that's causing others to stumble. Jesus is calling you and I to, to choose to stop doing whatever we're doing in regards to our hands through our actions. To stop doing whatever it is regarding our feet that, that uh, through where we go, that's a stumbling block for others. 
to choose to, to stop doing whatever in regards to our eyes and what it is that we view that causes others to stumble in their faith. You know, it's better just not to pretend that we aren't stumbling blocks to others. It's better to acknowledge that more often than not, uh, we are stumbling blocks to other people, even without the intent to do so. I believe that somewhere in this scripture that Jesus teaches uh, from the Gospel of Mark that, that Jesus knows that we are stumbling blocks. I believe that Jesus... Uh, knows that that we'll continue to be stumbling blocks in the world and that we'll never completely uh, uh, overcome being a stumbling block to others. And I believe that Jesus wants to encourage his followers and he wants to encourage us this day to acknowledge where we are and to seek him more completely on a daily basis that he might help us to be less stumbling blocks in the world. It's in Christ. And it's in his ways that we can live and that we can be stumble block, we can live the stumble block free life. It's in Christ that empowers us and enables us. It's not on our own ability and our own power. It's in Christ that that we are more likely to lift up others, to lift up others than to put them down or to hold them back or to put them in their place. It's time, church. It's time, God's people, people of God, to intentionally think about how that we, uh, that we might be stumbling blocks to others. And it's time that we consider doing something about it. Maybe just heeding the warning from the scriptures uh, that the disciples, the guys who should have known, when Jesus says, stop doing what you're doing, that's holding people back and it's causing people to stumble. God's word says this, let those who have ears hear. Hear the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ that gives life and that gives hope. May we be filled with the life and hope of Christ that we might portray and, uh, and, and that life and hope might come from us out into the world. That we might not be the grand stumbling block that we have been. Amen. Closing hymn this morning is uh, Are You Able? Verses 1, 2, and 4. Let's stand and sing hymn 530.
place and to be among uh, the people of God, the family, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, I want to remind you that next Sunday, uh, in order to get in the sanctuary, you have to bring a bag of candy. Uh, just want you to know there's a ticket next week, bring a bag of candy. Uh, and if there's four of you, bring four bags uh, in the family. Okay, we need candy uh, to give away to precious little children because we want to support our dentist in town. Uh, but tooth decay, okay? Uh, right, Vicky? Uh, we, want to, we want to keep them in business. And so uh, we're going to make a child smile and, and have a blast as we give out candy at the end of October. So please bring candy next week if you don't mind. Uh, it is always good to be in this place. And uh, uh, thank you for being here. And it is good to be in the presence of our God because it is in God, it is in Christ, that we are who we are. And so I hope this morning that you have heard something from the Lord through Scripture and through prayer and through the amazing music this morning uh, and the music that uh, Sarah plays on the organ. I hope you've experienced that presence of God that can take you out of here empowered to not be a stumbling block, but to be a builder of the kingdom of our God in this world. That would be a good thing. Would you now receive this benediction? And now by the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship and community of the Holy Spirit about each of you now and forever. Amen. Amen.